to this second Azure Cloud Native user group. This time we actually got the video to work, which is amazing. Um, so in today's session, we're going to ask everyone to be aware of others, be friendly and patient, be welcoming and respectful, be open to all questions and viewpoints, be understanding of differences, be kind and considerate to others. Yes, and today we have something a little bit uh, special, something we want to do more of in the future as well. It's a, a spotlight session which basically just means that we're going to take a uh, you know present or let a a, a um, take a project so to speak and uh, and have a spotlight on that instead of having like the the normal uh, CFP talks that we have we're going to be focusing on a single project and today we have Armo uh, joining us uh you know speaking about a a really cool tool called Cubescape which is uh, cool and welcome Amir Hi. Hi. Thank you for hosting me. Yeah, no no problem. This is this is really great. We need more security stuff with Kubernetes, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh it's it's one of the things that everyone keeps on forgetting, unfortunately. No, it, so. it, it, you know, people some people think that Kubernetes is secure by default. Yeah. And unfortunately it is not. Yes, there's a big biggest misconception in cloud in general, but especially also in cloud native. Everyone thinks it's secure by default, but uh, but obviously it's not. Uh, so you're going to show off a tool that you're that uh, Arma has created that is uh, open source uh, that can be used to find uh, and and secure your clusters a bit a little bit more. So looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, is there anything else we want to do? Uh, obviously, yeah. Before we start, um, so Amir just have one screen at the moment. So feel free to ask questions uh, along the way, and we'll. Uh, very kindly interrupt Amir and and tell him the 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 question that's coming in, and uh, we'll try to get as much answer as uh, possible during the talk. So yeah. um, before we start, I think Carl has got something to say about um, what's going on with the world today and what we're trying to do in today's session as well. So uh, with uh, thoughts on what's happening in. in uh, Ukraine and stuff, we as a group are trying to raise some money for uh, the Ukraine humani Humanitarian Appeal um, organized by the Disasters Emergency Committee. So I think we clicked that at the same time, Richard. So <laughs> if uh, if you feel up to it and are able to, um, the DEC would sure appreciate your donations to support that humanitarian appeal going towards uh, the displaced and the refugees coming out of Ukraine. So thank you. Right, and with that, um, we'll, we'll leave you to it. So actually, uh, one of the things um, is that um, uh, part of our team is based in Ukraine. So of course, we're, we're um, sending them their, our love and hope that the situation there uh, will come down uh, quite uh, soon. Um, so we, we created Cubescape. Um, um, Cubescape is an open source project um, that uh, gives you the ability uh, to scan your Kubernetes um, and uh, clusters and YAML files um, and to find out misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, and other stuff that I will show you in a second. Um, the project itself is available on uh, GitHub. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Um, and you, you will be able to see it yourself. So the project is called Cubescape. Um, it has a, a big community. Uh, people are contributing uh, code to it. The only thing you need to do if you have a cluster, uh, you, you just need to uh, copy this line, uh, deploy it in any cluster that you have uh, or in any environment that has a kubectl on it. Um, and then you, you run a scan and you get results. Um, once you get the results, the result table, you have a link. If you click on the link, uh, you get uh, to this UI. 
Uh, I made I made some scans uh, in my uh, in my AKS account. This is the uh, hipster shop uh, Google's uh, demo and uh, microservices demo application, which uh, uh, I often use uh, to demonstrate uh, Cubescape. Um, but unfortunately, uh, just before this session, um, my subscription, my uh, free subscription, uh, got suspended. Uh, so I'm going to show you the the, uh, the output of the scan results, uh, but uh, um, I'm, if if you want to see live scans and if someone will ask about it, uh, I will show it to you uh, on uh, GCP uh, on GKE because uh, that's a live cluster that I have. So uh, once you run a scan uh, and you click um, the the link at the end of the scan, uh, you will be able. Uh, to see uh, the scan results. Uh, the way that we show the scan results um, is, um, um, is uh, on uh, this uh, beautiful UI. And uh, basically, uh, if you, if you uh, um, scan your clusters uh, for configuration, uh, you need to know that the way that we work uh, is by something that is called controls. Control is the basic unit, uh, the basic test that we are conducting. Uh, right now we have 68 controls and we keep on developing more and more controls. And of course you can contribute um, uh, and create your own control and then the entire community can enjoy uh, um, these controls. Um, you can see here that each control is basically a test. Uh, so for example, here we're, we're uh, watching uh, your uh, YAML files, uh, which YAML files you can uh, see it in the documentation. Uh, we look for uh, these objects in Kubernetes. And what we do, uh, we look uh, and uh, make sure that you have a readiness a probe uh, defined. Now, uh, some of these controls uh, requires, requires uh, some customization. Uh, for example, here, uh, we define the uh, registries that you can pull images from. It comes with uh, some sort of uh, default values but you can change it and adjust it uh, to your needs. All these controls uh, are running in something that we call frameworks. The system comes with uh, four built-in frameworks, but you can create your own framework. Um, so let's call this one Azure um, Best Practices. Um, and, and you can choose, oh, sorry practices uh, and you can choose uh, uh, which controls uh, will be a uh, part will be part uh, of this uh, specific um, a specific framework once you've done that and you created the framework and you can create as many frameworks as you like uh, you can use cubescape uh, to scan uh, using this framework in any one of the stages, in CI/CD um, and uh, even as a VS Code extension, so you can you can also scan your YAML files when you create them at the development uh, phase. Um, so once we understood the concept of frameworks and controls, uh, let's go back to the results. So when we look at the results, uh, here I'm looking at Armo Best, we have DevOps Best, uh, MITRE, uh, the uh, MITRE framework for uh, Kubernetes that Microsoft created a few years ago, the NSA hardening guide for Kubernetes. And this is basically a framework that I created. This contains all of the controls uh, that we have uh, in Cubescape. We tried we try to do a really, really good job in, in, in creating a self-explanatory uh, UI. Uh, so you're, you're able to see, for example, here, uh, that this uh, control uh, is configurable. So you, if, if you don't agree with the results that we uh, show you, you can go and uh, check the configuration, and maybe change it, and it will create a better results. Um, and then um, some of these controls that require integration to your cloud, if in order for Cubescape to be able to ask questions about your, uh, for example, uh, your API uh, server settings, for example, if you uh, enabled audit logging, or in some cases, it requires uh, to run uh, what we call host sensor, 
um, in order to check your worker nodes. Basically, if you think about it, the control itself can scan and check uh, your uh, Kubernetes configuration files, your API server settings, your worker node, and it looks at things like image scanning, a result, and role-based access control. And we will talk about it a little bit later. The whole sensor, the way that the whole sensor uh, works is something that uh, a design that we created together uh, with the uh, users, many users that I've been talking to, and uh, uh, together we came up uh, with this design. Um, while we are all very much interested in uh, how the worker nodes uh, are configured, uh, and we see that in, in, uh, in, you know, in a recent events, uh, for example, there is a vulnerability that today we published a, a blog about it, uh, recently a new vulnerability uh, uh, related to C groups uh, on uh, Linux. Um, if you want to ask something about your worker nodes, you can do two things. Either you can log into the worker nodes and type the commands and, and, and look at the output, which is not very scalable and it's not something that you can do um, every every time uh, uh, there is you know something new uh, happening or you know on, on, on a weekly basis or on a daily basis it's, it's not scalable at all or you can deploy a privileged pod or a, a agent on a, a each one of the devices on the worker nodes and collect the data uh, from them um we think we think that uh, it creates it creates a challenge and, and it increases uh, the uh, tax surface if you create if you deploy a, a privileged a, a agent on your worker nodes just to collect uh, some uh, data uh, to, to to test something for that, that you need to know for a brief of a second and that's why we created this host sensor. The host sensor is basically a privileged daemon set that we deploy only if you enable us, if you run it as part of the command parameters of the scan, and then we deploy it, we collect the data, and we destroy the agent and the data. And by that, we, we get the data that we want. We can check the configuration of the worker nodes, but we're not increasing the attack surface. And this was very, very important for us. So this is why we came with this design. If you look at the results, uh, the, the uh, cool thing about Cubescape is that you have uh, historical scans. So, you know, I can go to a previous scan, uh, scans, uh, and it gives you an understanding of changes. So for example, here, you can see that I had 34 resources that failed. Now I have 35. And if I want to understand what changed, I just click on it and I see all the resources that basically fail this control. And it shows me in blue um, the new resource uh, that uh, started failing uh, in my cluster. Uh, the, the opposite is also true. So if something is uh, getting better, you will have a green arrow uh, going down. In, and, uh, um, and that's that's a really really a nice way to understand uh, what you need to change. Once you click uh, on the number uh, of failed resources, we show you a list of the failed resources, and then you're able to do few things. One is you're able to set uh, what we call exceptions. Uh, you can say, okay, uh, I know this cron job. This cron job doesn't have resource uh, limitation, and it's okay, you know, because this is how Calico node uh, is created. Uh, so we can put it in exception, or maybe you know, since we know that Calico works this way, maybe the entire namespace should be in exception. The meaning of putting it in exception means that the next time that you scan, we will not shout that you have X failed resources, we will take out uh, the uh, resources that you uh, placed in exception. We'll still show it to you because we understand that maybe you want to change your decision, but uh, we're not going to tell you that it failed. 
The next thing that you were able to do, um, you're able to ask yourself, why did it fail? And then by clicking uh, this uh, tool, you're able to see the YAML file that created uh, uh, basically this uh, resource and you see why it failed. So in this case, it is failing because I don't have resource limitation. Um, and then you can see that Cubescape suggests that you will add these two parameters and set your values. Um, and then, you know, this uh, resource will not fail uh, when you scan uh, this specific control. Okay. Amir, can I just interrupt you for a question from the chat? No, Actually, sure. from one of our co-hosts, uh, Richard. So he asks, where is the exception information saved? Is it on the cluster? No, so so basically, that's a great question. So basically, it, it, it is saved in our uh, backend, in, in, uh, in, uh, in our backend, but you're able to uh, export the exceptions and use the same exceptions in your CI or in your uh, um, uh, virtual, uh, Visual Studio code. Uh, so, you know, basically, if you go to our project, uh, okay, I will show it from here. If you go to our documentation, um, you will be able to see um, that uh, we have a detailed explanation about exceptions. Uh, basically, you can create them uh, and run scans with exceptions. Um, and the exception mechanism in the command line is super, super flexible. You can do things like, you know, don't uh, put an exception, the entire namespace or a specific objects or uh, resources with a certain name. Um, so, you know, you can you can create the exception file and put it in your infrastructure as code um, and use it to scan, um, you know, if, if you're deploying clusters in many availability zones, so you, you, you can use the same exception file to scan all these clusters. Perfect, thank you. But, um, so so that was the, the uh, um, scanning uh, of controls and seeing the failed resources. We have the, uh, um, the I would say it's it's different layout of the same uh, data. Here, uh, what we're seeing is the resource view. So now I can go and I can say, show me all my deployments. And then I want to understand on which uh, control this uh, Redis cart is failing. And I see a bunch of controls and I can set exceptions from here as well. But I can also uh, go to the same tool and ask Cubescape to tell me on which one of the controls it failed and where it failed um, and what I should do in order to fix it. So here you can see that uh, uh, this one was failing because I took the image uh, from uh, this location uh, or here it is failing because I, I'm missing some labels, etc., etc. And you can fix it and you can download the file uh, and uh, it's quite uh, easy uh, to do that. So that that uh, uh, basically, and, and you know, we have uh, other features uh, like uh, you have this uh, graph and you can add uh, frameworks uh, to the view um, and you can decide that you want to, to see this graph. Uh, we, we support only uh, showing three graphs at a time um, and you can scan from the UI uh, if you deployed our Helm chart, which I will talk about it in a second, about deployment options, um, then uh, you're able uh, to scan from here, from the UI, uh, as well as set uh, recurring scans. Uh, we're using um, um, Kubernetes cron jobs um, uh, to do these scans. And uh, there is a cool feature that you can uh, put uh, the uh, cron job, the cron job a, a format and then get a representation in human language uh, so you will not make any mistake uh, by creating that and that's basically basically in, in a very very high level um, scanning um, I'm saying that it's in high level and, and, and I talked a lot, a, a lot about it because basically you can do a lot of things with scan you can scan a specific controls, specific frameworks. You can scan in your CI, you can scan 
in, in, in uh, your VS Code extension, uh, you can set threshold that, that you know, will tell you that if scan is below this, uh, above this threshold, uh, fail my build, et cetera, et cetera. And the documentation covers everything. Uh, and uh, um, um, you, can, uh, you can definitely go and, and, and dig uh, into it uh, even more uh, than what I just explained. The, um, the way that you deploy Kubescape, there, there are two options for deploying Kubescape. One is uh, by using it as a command line. Uh, that's uh, what you, uh, you see here. Um, it's you know, a, a quite uh, easy to, um, to uh, download it from uh, Git and then, um, and then uh, run, uh, run a scan. Um, but you can also uh, deploy a Helm chart and basically, if you deploy this Helm chart, we create a namespace uh, in uh, Armo system namespace with the two pods, uh, one for the image scanning that I will be covering in a second, uh, and the other one, uh, which basically um, is implementing a webhook to understand uh, all the changes that you have in your cluster. When it comes to uh, image scanning, uh, we are using Encore. Uh, we we were uh, looking at a lot of uh, um, open source projects for uh, image scanning, and we found out that the uh, Encore uh, serves our needs uh, uh, the best. Uh, and as an open source project, uh, we uh, um, we like to use open source as much as possible. Um, and actually, we 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 want to contribute code to Encore because we think it's a cool project, and uh, we can definitely. Uh, help uh, improving it and we have some ideas that we are going to start and implement soon uh, the way that image scanning works now um, is basically uh, once you uh, deploy the helm chart we scan your cluster uh, and then uh, you can uh, decide uh, which uh, a cluster uh, or uh, which namespace uh, uh, in this cluster you want to scan um, we have a cron job, a default cron job that scans your cluster uh, every midnight, but of course you can change it. And in the next release, um, we are going to support also a recurring scans uh, from the UI. The, the basic idea is that um, we're showing you, uh, why it doesn't go down? Okay, so we're, we're showing you here um, the uh, report, the metadata of the, uh, of the scan report. Um, and we give you the ability uh, to understand how uh, um, your patching efforts uh, are uh, going. Uh, we give you the ability to slice and dice the information that you have. So here I'm saying, show me all the images that has critical vulnerabilities and high vulnerabilities. Uh, we give you the ability to also uh, filter by um, images that has vulnerabilities that uh, has fixes. Uh, and we added the ability on top of Encore um, to mark uh, CVEs, vulnerabilities, as remote code execution. The reason we did that uh, is because remote code execution uh, are, a you know, it's, it's a family of vulnerabilities that basically you can exploit them from remote, like the name implies. Uh, so we, we think that these are the most dangerous ones um, because you know, some vulnerabilities, you need to be on the cluster in order to exploit them. They are important. You need to fix them for sure. But remote code execution means that someone outside of your cluster can go in and exploit it. And of course, we don't want that to happen. And this is why we give you the ability to filter uh, based on that as well. Um, and then we give you the ability uh, to see all the scan results including hist historical scan result or uh, only the latest scan results. Uh, I think that the latest are the most uh, interesting ones uh, because they uh, actually reflect your uh, current status. Uh, once you go in, uh, you get the same thing, the same view, uh, but now you have the, um, the CV, the vulnerability list, um, and you can go and read about them. Uh, you can, again, you can slice them. Um, and say, I want to see only the ones that has fix and RC and critical and high, which I don't have anyone that uh, is, uh, I have two uh, critical vulnerabilities that are RCEs in uh, libc.bin and I can go in and read 
how to mitigate it and when, what should they uh, should they do etc uh, etc et um, and here also we show you a graph uh, that uh, you will be able to see that uh, indeed um, uh, people are patching uh, uh, the uh, these vulnerabilities and over time hopefully uh, the numbers uh, will go down um, that is basically what we have now in image scanning. Um, and I will talk about future plans uh, for image scanning. I can show you one thing that we started uh, doing. Um, it's only the initial, uh, the, the, the first uh, release, but you can see here, we created, a, a, we just wanted to test the ability. Uh, we created a, a control that basically show you all the images that has critical vulnerabilities. It doesn't mean a lot, and we are going to remove it and replace it with something that has meaning, but it's just, it is just showing us that uh, basically we have the ability to go and ask intelligent questions uh, about uh, 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 vulnerabilities that we found uh, using image scanning. It gives us the ability, for example, to ask questions which will come in the next versions of uh, Cubescape, like show me all the external facing workloads that has an RC vulnerability, which is critical and high. Now that's a complex question, but it's very, very valuable. Um, and, you know, I guess that uh, if you have uh, these uh, kind of uh, vulnerabilities, you need to patch them first. The last capability that we have before I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, near future things that we're doing uh, for Cubescape uh, is the RBAC uh, visualizer. Now, uh, RBAC role-based access control is quite complex in Kubernetes. Um, if you want to understand how it works and, and what is connected to what, you need to do a lot of cube cutter. You need to know if your role is a cluster role or a namespace role and in which namespace uh, it uh, exists, uh, the workload uh, uh, to which service account it is, uh, it is uh, connected and the service account, what kind of roles it is, it has and capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it might be very, very complex. Uh, and that that's why we created this visualization tool uh, for a role-based access control. Uh, basically, uh, you can see here um, uh, all the relations uh, between uh, these uh, different uh, objects in uh, Kubernetes. We give you the ability to run queries. Uh, so for example, I ran it uh, yesterday um, on my, uh, on my uh, AKS cluster, and I found out that Google, uh, that Google, sorry, that uh, Microsoft are adding this user, the cluster uh, user, which is basically a cluster admin. Um, and it has the same capabilities as cluster admin. And um, I wonder why they did it. So if anyone knows why uh, just in AKS, you have a cluster user and cluster admin, which are the same role, uh, uh, sorry, they, they, they are connected to the same role, um, you know, please let me know. The um, the the other keep the other things that you can see here um, are uh, controls. Uh, so you know you can uh, ask who can uh, do port forwarding in my cluster, and you see now that a lot of people can do port forwarding. Um, and I can say you know a, a group uh, a, the, a, a, the similar verbs or a, show me all the objects. Uh, by their type, and then I can go uh, and watch all the service accounts that are able to do port forwarding and all the different roles that uh, uh, can do port forwarding, uh, etc. Um, we also support the ability to run who, who can. Um, so you can uh, um, um, you know, ask questions like uh, who can uh, get, list, and watch um my secrets um and then that's it you, you you see who can do that in in your cluster um and you can also go from the investigation uh, pane um, and ask things like uh, you know i have a, a user 
um, this, this user, for example, um, and I want to understand um, uh, what are the roles that this user has, um, and then uh, what are the uh, capabilities uh, of this uh, specific, uh, specific cluster role, and then I can ask questions like, who else is connected to this role? In this case, uh, no one else. Uh, but I, you know, it, it can go to things like I can, I can say, show me all the roles that can do something on config maps, and and it goes on and on and on. Um, so it's very, very powerful, um, and it gives you a lot of capabilities. And of course, um, we have controls uh, that are looking uh, into a role-based access control, like uh, uh, this one. Uh, who can uh, uh, exec into containers. Uh, and uh, you can see here that I can set exceptions here as well. Uh, and in, in a click of a button, I can go and see it in a map um, and uh, act uh, upon that and run uh, my investigations uh, from here. So that's, I think that's a, a good time uh, to, um, uh, to get uh, uh, questions. Uh, if if uh, uh, someone asked any question, or I can move and, and uh, tell you what we're doing in the uh, short term, and then a little bit of a roadmap uh, plans uh, for CubeScape. Sure, thank you, Amir. Uh, it would be good to hear. Um, if there are questions in the chat, um, if anybody wants to ask them, we'll be sure to post them. Um, just a discussion ongoing in the chat there, Amir, about that extra user, the yeah, cluster so user. Oh. On the RBAC thing, Azure has a um, an option to disable the local admin accounts and integrate okay. it with Azure AD. So potentially, it would be awesome to see one day if we disable the local admin accounts and enable Azure AD, what this view looks like to see if they've actually been removed. So I think tomorrow that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> So actually, actually, um, um, when you scan the cluster uh, or on any change, we immediately, um, um, you know, the RBAC view is uh, influenced by that. Okay. Um, so yeah, try it. Yeah, I'll definitely give it a try and I'll let you know the results. So I'll send you a screenshot. Great. So so um, some things that uh, we, we, we are going uh, to do uh, in the uh, short term, uh, I'm going to uh, try and, and uh, touch uh, each one um, of uh, uh, the screens uh, to kind of illustrate. Uh, here you see it went down um, to illustrate what what we are trying uh, uh, to do. So first of all, uh, we um, we are going to change a little bit the uh, exceptions uh, mechanism. Uh, there is there is the way that it works now in the UI only in the UI. Um, is that uh, you need to define the exceptions uh, per control, per framework, per cluster. Um, and, and, you know, you can export the exceptions and then change them, you know, with, with simple scripting capabilities, you can probably create a, an exception list that you, you can apply on every cluster. But the fact is that on the CLI side, you can do amazing stuff. You have, you know, regular expressions, and you know, you have the ability to decide on uh, uh, based on kind and namespace and, and other attributes, labels, exceptions based on labels, which is amazing. We want to do the same thing in the UI, uh, so we are going to change a little bit the exceptions mechanism and try to do them easy because the feedback that we got from you, from users, is that. You know, setting the exceptions is very important. You can't have a security product giving you all alerts without the ability to say, you know, this is okay, while this needs to be fixed. Um, so that's why uh, we, we think, you know, we together, we think that exception is great, but we need to make it more accessible. And, and, and that, uh, that is something that we are going to do. And we have a recommendation uh, capability now. Um, we, we're trying, I'm, I'm trying to find out if I have a good example here uh, of the, of the uh, recommendation mechanism that we have. No, I can't, I can't find anything uh, meaningful. Uh, you know what, let me try, last try. Uh, let me find deployments. 
probably in deployment we will have something. No. Ah, yes. So sometimes if you use Cubescape, uh, you, you see this light ball. And this light ball basically means that we recommend you to put something in exceptions. Um, we, we started to work on this notion. Um, it's like automating the uh, exceptions mechanism, trying to help you to say things like, you know, Cube proxy is privileged. It's okay that it's privileged. No one is hacking your, uh, your cluster and no one created this misconfiguration. This is how Kubernetes comes. Um, and just put it in exception. And, and, and when you see this light ball, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to be aware of it. Um, and, and so, so we, we are going to improve that as well and create an exception mechanism, which will be uh, easier uh, to use. We are going to create a lot of controls uh, new controls which are based on host scanning, API scanning, and uh, image scanning, as I mentioned uh, before. Uh, then in image scanning, we're going to give you the ability um, to look for specific CVE, like show me all the images that has this specific CVE that I'm looking for. Um, and uh, we, we're going to have uh, recurring scans. We're going to also have exceptions on image scanning, like you will, you will be able to say, no, I don't care about this specific scan uh, because I'm not using this uh, deployment anymore. So you can put it in an exception or you can log in and say, you know, these, these uh, neglectable things, you know, I can put them in exception. I don't uh, care about them. Or uh, I have a critical vulnerability that is being virtually patched by a firewall. And I know that my team uh, I already fixed it and it's not deployed yet. So I'm going to put it in exceptions because I don't want to see um, a critical vulnerability every time I run my scan. Um, in RBAC, we want to uh, be able to tell you um, to reflect the recommendations, to tell you, you know, if you have a system user um, and, you know, they're, they're using the uh, roles and, and the uh, role binding and uh, verbs that they should be using, we're going to tell you, hey, it's okay, this is how it works. Uh, and I want to create some mechanisms uh, that uh, will be able to automatically identify uh, and present uh, misconfigurations. Uh, I can show you a misconfiguration uh, that uh, I was able to find in uh, GKE. Um, so let me, uh, it, it will take me a second. I remember this user is, And this is the user. Um, so, you know, if, oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake. So I need to clear my graph and then I look at this. Uh, no, I don't want the cluster role. I just want the user. Okay. So now if we look at this user, you see this user is bounded to three cluster roles, four cluster roles. Um, and if we look at the resources of these cluster roles, uh, you will be able to see that basically there are, in my opinion, two misconfigurations here uh, that you can easily see. And um, maybe it's a question that we can ask the audience. What are the two misconfigurations that you can see here? No one? No one yet. I'm looking at you, Richard Huber. Can you can you see these? Yeah, I'm just just looking now. I can see two of your um, roles are talking to one resource. Maybe that could be the issue. So, so you see here, uh, you have two cluster roles uh, that are pointing to create this specific uh, resource. But you can see that this cluster role has the ability to create, delete, and get this resource. So why do you need this cluster role? Why mm -hmm. do we need this binding? Because this shadows uh, this specific role, right? Yeah. And then, you know, all these three roles are basically useless because this guy is a cluster admin. And basically, he can do whatever he wants. So that's the second uh, problem. Why do you need to bound to bind this user to all these roles if at the end of the day is a cluster admin. So my my thought is, you know, there, there might be that 
the uh, people in Google decided to put these three roles uh, to this user and then they had some kind of a bug and then they wanted to increase the roles and they they, they uh, added cluster admin. And then for some reason, they forgot to remove it. That's, you know, one assumption. Um, and, and then clearly it's a misconfiguration or they, they you know, they did something here that I cannot understand why, but you know, that, that's how it comes in a GKE. Um, and and uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to automatically identify these, uh, um, uh, these things, misconfigurations and kind of uh, uh, give you these graphs that you can go uh, and see and inspect it yourself. Um, we, we, we had a discussion uh, if this is a security event um, and then, and then you know, my question was whether each misconfiguration is a security event. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, misconfigurations basically are not uh, causing for any security event, but they might be used by someone malicious to gain access, to get data, to do something malicious. So this is why we're trying to narrow down these misconfigurations. Uh, of course, I do think that Kubernetes, if you're running a Kubernetes cluster, you need to secure a cluster from the beginning till the end, meaning that you, know, you secure the cluster along the way, uh, you find misconfigurations, you find vulnerabilities, you patch them, you fix these misconfigurations. But when it comes to runtime, you also need to uh, protect your workloads, your processes, your network, um, um, you need to make sure uh, that you have a network policy. You need to make sure that uh, um, you're hardening uh, the way that the containers uh, work. And you need to make sure you have some kind of a runtime uh, security uh, for uh, Kubernetes. And that's uh, what we uh, want to give uh, our users uh, at the end, an A to Z a Kubernetes uh, security solution. So uh, that's uh, where uh, Cubescape is uh, going in the very, very far uh, roadmap. Um, and and uh, in, in the short uh, roadmap, uh, while we talked about each one of the capabilities, um, I can tell you that uh, we are going to add a dashboard. Uh, I can show you how it looks uh, in uh, development. Uh, so this is uh, my dev clusters. Um, and, and we're just at the beginning of creating uh, this dashboard. Um, okay, so let me log in. Oh, Gods of Demo. Okay, so let me reload it. Okay, so that's, that's basically the beginning of the dashboard. The idea is that while most of our users are running several clusters, uh, they need to know on which cluster they need to focus. Um, so what we're doing here is we're comparing the clusters and we're giving you a, a, a clear understanding of which one uh, is more uh, dangerous or risky. And then you, you need to go and start uh, fixing uh, issues uh, on, a, a, on a, a specific cluster. Uh, you can see all the vulnerabilities. You can see the top five vulnerabilities that you have and you will have the ability to click here and go to the images that has this vulnerability. And then you know that once you fix it, uh, you kind of, you know, you, you, you solved a, a major problem and, and then uh, we can uh, calculate the next top five, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see here that uh, uh, when I go between different clusters, uh, I can see again, the top uh, five CVEs um, uh, coming um, in, in the right uh, relevance. And we, have, we will have the same thing and the same graph for um, uh, controls and uh, misconfigurations. Um, the other thing that we're going to add uh, in the, in the uh, near, uh, in the short term um, is uh, the ability to integrate uh, into a notification tracking systems. Uh, you can see now that we support Slack and we send some events uh, to Slack to uh, specified uh, Slack channels. Uh, of course, we want to add uh, more uh, platforms um, like uh, Teams, uh, but we also uh, want to have the ability uh, for, for example, oh, now I'm in dev, 
So let me go back to prod. Uh, we, we want to have uh, uh, the ability that uh, uh, you go to a specific control and you see the list of resources, you click on it. Um, and then if you want to open Jira ticket, you can do it from here. Um, and, and, you know, you can, you can say, you know, fix, let's fix these issues uh, or you can put, set exceptions and then share it. Uh, or if you uh, have the assistant remediation uh, feature um, where you can uh, go here and, and then um, open a pull request uh, saying, you know, um, this is the fixed YAML file, just apply it. Um, uh, we think that there is a lot of uh, value and, and this is something that we hear uh, from uh, uh, users that they want to be able uh, to shift data and findings out of Cubescape to other systems that they're working uh, with. And uh, of course, uh, we think that it's a great idea. Um, and I think that that's, that's it in the short term. Um, we, we are going to support image scanning uh, for uh, registries, uh, which we don't support now. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it in, in, in uh, the short term. What one question I have uh, for yeah. the short term goals of that are, are we going to be able to scan Windows container images? Because I know not many tools out there can actually do that yet. So it'd be cool if Armosec was the first one to ever do it. You know what? I, I, I never thought about it. You, you mean like uh, scanning, scanning? Do you know if Anchor supports uh, scanning uh, Windows images? I don't believe they do. I don't think any of the major players actually support it because I know Qualys doesn't. I don't think Trivi does either. So I don't think any of them actually support Windows container images. Um, that, so, yeah. that, that, that's a good that, that's a good thing. Uh, probably it, it would be wise to add it uh, to the roadmap. So, you know, I'm, I'm writing it uh, to myself. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. No worries. In, in, I can tell you that in the midterm, I mean, after we will finish um, the, uh, the, the things that I told you, uh, one of the, in, in the, in the midterm, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to add the ability um, to set uh, uh, admission controllers. Uh, we want to offer uh, both, both enforcement and automatic remediation. Um, and uh, we want to be able um, to really prioritize things for the user. Uh, we think that one of the problems, one of the challenges that you know the entire industry has, that it has so many findings that at the end of the day, some people they don't want to know because they say you know if i know that they have uh, i don't know uh, uh, you know I, I i you know i cannot do a calculation of the number of issues that they have here but if i know that i have hundreds of issues or thousands of issues and you know as, as my day to day is so crowded and and i have i'm so busy that i don't need to know about these 200 or 300 problems uh, that that you're pointing me to um, and and of course this is a really really bad situation to be in because you know the fact that you don't know doesn't mean that your attacker doesn't know and identifies it so we want to be able to prioritize it to give you hints to tell you how to solve them uh, to give you the ability to enforce them to auto remediate them we want to give you all the tools to make it easy because you know, we know that security might be complex, but we want to make it easy. Um, and one of the things that, you know, when we started uh, this journey of open sourcing um, Cubescape, we decided that we don't want to create yet another, you know, niche project that, that you know, we as a security company uh, are going to ship uh, to the community uh, and give them a teaser of our capabilities. We want to create a platform, a solution that aggregates all you need. I mean, if you look at it, it, it gives you all you need. It gives you the image scanning, you know, the artwork visualization, the configuration scanning, and in time, it will grow and give you the ability to look at things like a runtime a, a events and runtime a, capabilities in your Kubernetes cluster. So I think that, you know, use it. Um, 
give us a feedback if you're happy, give us a feedback if you're not happy. Uh, we really, really uh, like a, a feedback that is coming from users with a real use case. Um, and and uh, um, we, we definitely hear the community and, and uh, create things for them. Here you can see the channels uh, to contact us. So we have the uh, Git issues, of course, uh, Discord. We have a very, very active Discord channel that you, you saw that a second ago someone sent a, a, a uh, something on the Discord channel, and of course uh, mail. Um, and you know, I'm I'm available. Um, people sometimes ping me, and we uh, get the, uh, into a conversation, um, and uh, we create the things. And sometimes, if the priorities uh, doesn't get along, we always like contributors. Um, we have people that's contributing stuff to the uh, uh, to the project, and we really appreciate it. Um, there is there is going to be a, a Prometheus. I don't know if I'm doing a spoiler now, uh, but the uh, cube, cube uh, the Kubernetes Prometheus uh, maintainers, uh, they created the project with us. Uh, they wrote about how they uh, um, implemented Cubescape as, as part of their uh, scanning efforts for their project, but we did together something much bigger that they are going to talk about it in uh, KubeCon uh, in uh, uh, Amsterdam uh, later this year. Uh, so I think that that's it, plus minus. Um, you, you should definitely go uh, to our Git. Uh, you should definitely uh, read the, the documentation uh, and, uh, of course, uh, contribute. And you can see videos. We have a, a short videos that are giving you like how-tos um, that uh, you can uh, really enjoy and uh, learn from. Um, I'm stopping my sharing. And awesome. Yeah. That was brilliant. So one quick question I have. It's all open source now. Will it always be open source? Because you're bringing so much good stuff to this product, and most companies will charge for that. So everyone probably wants to know: Is it always going to be open source? So it's it, it's funny, you know, because we we I talk with users. Uh, that's my job. I'm a, I didn't introduce myself, but I'm the uh, VP product at Armo. Um, so um, I'm talking a lot with users, and and and. For some reason, everyone is asking about money. I mean, you're doing these great things, we enjoy it, but how much does it cost? And, yeah. and we had an argument in, in Armo, in the management team, and we decided to go and publish a pricing page. And we have a pricing page on, on site. We, I, you know, I, I, I hope that you don't have millions of followers because what I'm going to say now might get me fired. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, we didn't call any user and told him, hey, you're breaching, you know, you're breaching, or we didn't block anyone. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, I think that the focus, what I appreciate about the team, the management team, Armo, the developers, we're really keen of creating value. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't really care right now. I hope that my, my, my investors are not hearing you know this discussion <laughs> we don't really care about monetizing it yet uh, we, we look at creating value now when will we monetize i don't think that it, it you know it will it will change i think that cubescape will stay open source and we will continue to add capabilities to cubescape when it comes to runtime security maybe things will change and it's a year from now um according to my plans um but we will give you enough value uh because we think that you know our contribution to kubernetes kubernetes security is more important than getting a few millions of dollars that's awesome i love that answer. that's Brilliant. Yeah, I, I think that there's plenty of there's plenty of companies that follow like an open source core model where the actual tools are open source and free to use. But then there's always ways of making money, mm -hmm. like like Ashico, for instance, like Terraform. It's totally open source. There's nothing stopping you from using you know Terraform at all. Exactly. Uh, and if you want that in a nicer experience, you could use Terraform Cloud. You know, so you know that's where you get you know, more out of it. 
Um, and uh, but I have one question though, because I was kind of looking through some of the documentations and trying to figure something to to complain about. Uh, I can I can see I can see that the, like the cloud vendor integrations for Azure is not there yet. Um, so I can tell you I can tell you that now it's not a joke. Okay, I'm not laughing. Um, we we did all the integrations. Uh, of course, our priority is always the big three. Okay. Um, it's uh, you know AWS, Azure, and GCP, um, and then and then you know you need documentation in order to create this trust, right? Mm -hmm. And I can quote people from Microsoft that told me documentation of these SDKs suck. Um, they just you know it's not there, um, and I'm you know I'm 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 practically calling people from Microsoft. To, to, to give me some resource that will help us to get the right person to tell mm. us how to write the integration to AKS. Now, if someone, some of your audience knows about it, please ping me and we will really, really appreciate it because we really want to create it. We have a lot of users who are using it mm -hmm. um, and we want to give them this value. I, I've had similar struggles when it comes to writing things in Go against Azure. And it's kind of funny if we start looking at some of the .NET implementation stuff. It's really well documented. Uh, I at one point tried to uh, um, update a, a Go specific SDK uh, uh, part of the docs of Microsoft.com, and I thought I was correct. But then someone said, "Wait, that's not how it works yet." And you know, so so it, it's a little bit weird. Uh, we created this user group because we often see aws and google cloud being like first and then Azure comes when it comes to cloud native stuff while the actual cloud native tools that microsoft are creating is actually really good but then there's stuff like this that kind of just stops it which is which is just sad it's uh it's not good I, you know i i was i was working for a, a, a before armo i was working for checkpoint and probably you are aware of Checkpoint. Um, and, and I was managing the relationship with Azure, with, with Microsoft back then. And, you know, Checkpoint is, you know, the number one ISV for network security. You know, it's, it's a reward that they got for like a few years in a row from Microsoft. Hmm. And I had, you know, everyone, I, I, I could call any, anyone, and I got a sneak peek to every new feature that Microsoft were developing. But now, as a small startup, trying to get someone to help me, well, that's really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, Daniel, who's a Microsoft MVP in Azure and works with AKS a lot, has posted a, a contact name you might be able to use. So great. Have a little Google on, on him, and hopefully they can help. And 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 you know obviously we we are a couple of MVPs on Azure, so we we have some contact information for people and stuff like that. So if there is anything in specific, because you know we don't want Azure to kind of lag behind when it comes to the cloud native things, because I I like I personally I prefer uh, AKS over the others. I I like working in in like the the, the Azure uh, cloud native space. But then you have stuff like this, like for instance, the Go SDK being a little bit down prioritized. I don't know if it's from like people developing the SDK or people just documenting the features or what, but you know, something is not not great there. And so I'm struggling with the same things and the things that I'm creating, just letting you know that you're not yeah. the only ones. So I hope that that answered your question. I mean, we, 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 we did put there the icon because we thought that someone will see it and we'll decide to contribute. Um, and then, yep. you know, it, it would be great, a win-win. Um, and, and, and of course, you know, it's, it's, it's in my plan to support ACR as well and, and, mm. and things. Uh, we, have, we have users who are asking us to support um, Azure DevOps uh, um, uh, capabilities for, uh, you know, opening tickets and things like that, and, and you know, it, uh, or scanning. Um, a Cubescape in, in uh, the pipeline. I love Microsoft. I think it's a great company. Documentation, not so good. Yeah. 
I, I, I agree, at least in some cases, uh, not the places where I obviously updated the documentation. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, that, that makes perfect sense. So I, I was just asking since I saw that that was a limitation and I also saw that there is an open issue on the Cubescape repository. And uh, I'll, I'll just say like from, from, from my side, at least, I, I would like to be, if, if, you, if you wanna try something out with AKS, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, both Richard and for, for, for that matter, Carl also is, is, would be glad to test out Cubescape capabilities against AKS and help you. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, 100%. Right. You know, the problem is that, you know, once you suggested it, we're going to actually use it. We're, we're you know, we're Israelis, yep. no politeness. You said <laughs> that next day my developers will be calling you and sending you... <laughs> Yeah, well, th that, that's okay. Uh, I'm from above the Arctic Circle, almost at the North Pole. We're we're sailors, and we swear and we fight and do stuff. I'm sure I shouldn't say on stream. So uh, that's perfectly fine. I understand. Uh, feel free to just send me anything. I'll I'll, I'll make sure to take a good look at it. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. And one thing I wanted to mention as well uh, before we finish for the time is. Amosex got this amazing swag store now as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. So. So one of, one of the things, I forgot to mention, thank you very much. So we, we, have, we have a swag store. If you register to Cubescape, if you use it, if you contribute to it, if you give us a feedback, we give you coins. And with these coins, you can buy really, really cool swag. You don't need to, to go and try to find us in a convention or something I like have, that. I have, yeah. I have a T-shirt on right now. <laughs> yeah. Great. So I, I, I'm, I actually ordered two mugs. Um, so so I'm, I'm waiting for it to come. Uh, maybe next time we can uh, we can ch do cheers with the uh, with the uh, cups, uh, but um, yeah, we have we have the swag store. It's really really cool, and, and the, uh, people like it. Um, mm -hmm. Who doesn't like swag? Exactly. Yeah, I, I only wear things that people have given me, or that I got <laughs> from from something. I, I have no other clothes. But <laughs> that's how I work. <laughs> awesome. uh, but. Excellent. Do we have anything else to before we wrap up? No more questions by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, I think we're we're at the end. All right. So th thanks a lot, Amir, for 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 coming on and explaining what's going on with Cubescape and obviously giving us a little bit of sneak peeks into what's coming up. That's that's really appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for hosting me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Th thanks for being part of it. All right, so um, I think we should probably mention our next meetup, which is happening on the 22nd of March. Um, so keep an eye out for the tweets about that, and it should already be live, so you can subscribe in the YouTube channel. Uh, and we've got Tom Kirkhoff talking about Kido, I believe. So it should be mm -hmm. a good one to see. Yes, it will. So thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>